Welcome back. This week, we continue to count down my top 10 favorite comic book series of all time. And this week, number nine is a most peculiar comic book experience. Stay tuned. All right. Hey, kids, it's comics. But which comic are we talking about this week? Man, I'm super excited. Can't wait to talk about Tales of the Bean World. All right, I'm excited to introduce you to Tales of the Bean World by cartoonist Larry Martyr. Um, you're probably familiar with the name. He actually helped Image Comics um, get their act together, so to speak. Uh, he, he also worked for Todd McFarlane Productions. Um, but he is a cartoonist and he is the creator of Bean World. Now, this is unlike anything that you've ever read. <laughs> Here's the map of the known Bean World, the four realities, the Thin Lake, Legendary Edge, Grandma Pa, Chow Down Pool, Professor Garbanzo's Fix It Shop, and the proverbial Sandy Beach. There's a, a Bean World glossary, which I believe is in each and every issue. And this particular comic is from 1989, uh, but it actually started in the early 80s. There have been a few collections, and then in the late 90s, um, Bean World was a part of Rob Liefeld's anthology series, Asylum. So it actually got to appear in color, which was pretty awesome. Larry Martyr has been influenced by Jack Kirby, Robert Crumb, um, Native American culture, heritage, If you were to ask me, Jamie, what is it like? I, I just don't know. <laughs> I mean, I can't say, oh, well, hey, if you like Lord of the Rings or you like Batman or Space Coast, I, I, I just don't know. It's it's just, it's so unique. Um, I, I, I started the recording over um, because I had repeated myself. So I apologize if I have already said this, but one of his biggest fans was um, Jeff Smith, cartoonist for Bone. Jeff Smith loves Bean World and Larry Martin. Of course, Jim Valentino, another image guy. Uh, they started out doing doing their own their own thing, black and white comics. They go, what do we know about the murderers? Um, I would definitely suggest picking up one of the collections and giving this a try. It is a lot of fun and also, if you're a new artist, these little guys are fun to draw. They are really fun to draw. There's the Hoi Polloi. And they protect the chow. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't know. I don't really know who the good guys are and the bad guys. Who's the big fish? I guess the beans are the good guys. The Hoi Polloi is the bad guys. Or maybe, maybe you feel sorry for the Hoi Polloi. Sour sprout butts turn into foul tasting chow. Without my fork, the future looks unappetizing. The next morning, it's a goof off day. Chow soldiers line up to view. I love this hair. It's like Marge Simpson. This is, this is number nine on my list of top 10. I, I hope you'll, um, you'll give it a try. I know I got to meet Larry Martyr and he was, um, he was selling these little, they were like dried um, lima beans, butter beans. And he would draw two little dots on them and say they were action figures. I love this book. I love the simplicity of it. Complex simplicity. Because again, the story just really, sucks you in and you want to know more about the mythology 
I hope you'll give it a try and check it out next week. Number eight. Okay, this week we're talking about dynamic poses. What does that mean? What does it look like? Um, as always, I do recommend sketching and the tracing method. Now that's not to say that once you get better, once you get really, really good, you're not just gonna sit down and just draw something, right? Maybe without even any planning. That'll come naturally as you grow. But when you're beginning, when you're learning, I think it's important to sketch. I think it's important to revise again and again and again so you can learn certain things. Um, and so today we're gonna talk about the first thing, what is a static pose? And what is a dynamic pose? Okay, so we're gonna be looking at these two things. So a static pose would probably be a pose if you were going to, let's say design a character's costume, right? Um, it's, it's pretty standard. There's nothing that's gonna bring a lot of attention to it. It doesn't look like it's actually moving. Whereas a dynamic pose, even though it's, it's two dimensional and it's one drawing, you feel like there's depth, that there's movement, that there's action. All right, so a static pose. Let's say we take one of our shapes that we talked about last week. I'm gonna do a neck here. I'm gonna do another trapezoid here. Triangle. Break the legs into sections, there's knees. You see, we're real loosey-goosey here, okay? We're not trying to be perfect. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna section off the arms, the elbows, the hands, etc. okay? So this is a static pose, okay? Not very exciting but still cool, especially if you're designing a costume. So let's say we want our hero to have a mask, okay? Like a Batman or a space ghost. So we'll put some eyes in there, mouth. Okay, let's say that this, this guy's gonna have a design like this. Almost looks like a get his name, but he was in the Alpha Flight. Okay, so maybe we'll give this guy a cape. Okay, so look at these shapes. Now when you first sit down and you look at something that is completely finished, it can be overwhelming, but we're starting at ground zero. So look at these shapes. These are shapes that you're familiar with. Look at that, starting to form. Looks kind of kind of like a um, space ghost, okay? So this is a static pose. Now, what is a dynamic pose? Let me show you an example in this comic book. The Fly. This is from Impact Comics, and this would have been 1991. 1991. Now check out this pose. This is a dynamic pose. Okay? We got oval for the head, oval for the eyes. There's even an oval for the chest and the shoulders and the collarbone. And then line of action. The line of action. OK? 
kind of tells you where you want to place things. So we're gonna to try to do something like that with this guy. Okay, so again, we're just sketching. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna do the head the same way. Go ahead and mark where I think my eyes are gonna go. Okay. And we know we've got the, the neck here. We're gonna do that same shape, that trapezoid shape, but we're turning it, we're moving it. Okay. So I'm gonna take this leg, bring it out here. And this leg, bring it out here, okay? Now let's say we want this arm to come down like that. And then we're gonna bring this one up. Now, we can take that coat, that, that coat, <laughs> that cape, excuse me, that's static, that's not moving in this one. And let's pretend like he's he's up on a on a rooftop and the wind is blowing. Okay? So even though this is one drawing, there's movement. There's movement in, in that drawing. Just based on that um, on that cape. So then this is where we change things up, okay? So let's see, maybe we'll give him um, a Green Lantern type mask. Color that in. So let's give an emblem. Let's let's make him like a, uh, uh, like a like a hot sun or something. I'm just making this up as I go along. So black hole sun it makes me think of that song. Black hole sun, won't you come? Okay. Now we're gonna give him big gloves. Some boots. Give him some little boots. Ah, oh, look at those boots. All right. So, you know the drill. If you're gonna keep keep working on this, I always suggest to take a sheet of paper put over top. And maybe this time you're going to be a little more intentional and you're going to say, okay, well, I'm going to really go over these details and I'm going to take my time and I'm going to really focus making it detailed Always helps to make noises while you draw. Maybe in this one he's smiling because he knows he's about to defeat his enemy. And then once you have that basic shape, you can go in. Like a, I believe it was Ren from Ren and Stimpy said, you can add huge pectoral muscles. day every drawing is going to begin with shapes and so if you spend time working on ovals and rectangles 
I mean, just, just fill up notebooks with it. You're gonna be so far ahead of the game when you sit down and you decide to draw a character. Now, if you're like me, and you're not necessarily a superhero um, guy, like semi-realistic, then you're gonna wanna do cartoons. And the cool thing about cartoons is that you can exaggerate. And so you can give them a huge barrel chest. And his arm up here. And this one down here. See that? This is this is the way it starts. And I think a lot of people look at some of those drawings, those completed drawings that, that professionals have spent literally hours on and they get overwhelmed. And they don't realize just how much practice and effort and revisions go into doing some of those books. So I would go and maybe, maybe, maybe this guy has a little teeny tiny cape and a huge emblem. This is Man Man, the manliest man of all. So these are just a few examples of static and dynamic drawings. And I would encourage you, if you like superhero stuff, then look at superhero stuff. Why did he make, uh, this is Mike Parabek, why did he make all of the decisions that he made in this cover? What can you learn from these panels? I mean, look at this. Look at this panel right here. It's a giant egg. It's a giant egg shape. But look at all the detail, the teeth, the eyes. So it all start, but it all started when he laid this out. He just drew a big egg, right? Shapes. Take time with your drawings. Look at artists that you admire and ask yourself, why did they make these decisions? Like check out this panel right here. Look how everything here is in color, but he's all purple, all right? So what catches your eye? What catches your eye when you look at that panel? Why did they make those decisions? Uh oh, got some cartoons here. There are lots and lots of books that you can check out at the library. Um, How to Draw Comics. The Marvel Way is actually a good one. Um, there's a Scott McCloud book, Understanding Comics, that you can check out. And, and of course, practice practice, practice. <laughs> I cannot stress that enough. Just keep drawing every single day and you'll be surprised. If you start, if you start a sketchbook and you draw one thing in that sketchbook every single day, by the time you finish, you'll be surprised at your growth. Thank you so much for being here today. Next week, number eight in the top 10 favorite comic books of all time. And then we're going to have another drawing lesson. Thank you so much to those of you that have shared my videos this week. Um, it means the world to me. I appreciate you being here. Take care. See you next week. Lord willing.